the schools are not well adapted to boys. I don't think they're particularly well adapted to girls either, by the way, but they're particularly not well adapted to boys. Boys aren't designed to sit still and be bored out of their skulls for seven hours a day. And there are, there are boys with, with particular temperaments who are even less inclined to be able to do that. <clears throat> so, for example, if you're extroverted, highly social, possessed by a fair bit of enthusiasm and positive emotion, then you're going to appear more hyperactive. If you're creative, then your attention is going to be fragmented in some sense by the multiplicity of your interests. So if you're creative and extroverted, then you have both of those working uh, against you in terms of your quiescent adaptation to the school environment. If you're disagreeable, which is also more likely if you're male, then you're quite likely to push back against what you see as stupid arbitrary rules. And so we know perfectly well, for example, that attention deficit disorder overlaps with childhood conduct disorder and antisocial behavior. And I'm not saying that all children diagnosed with hyperactivity are conduct disordered. I'm saying that more aggressive boys tend to manifest symptoms that sometimes tilt them towards juvenile criminality and sometimes tilt them towards attention deficit disorder and hyperactivity. But it's partly their somewhat rebellious temperament. And so if you're disagreeable and extroverted and creative, then, well, then why wouldn't you be hyperactive? And so, and then you might say, so when, when, methamet when, when amphetamines were first used to treat hyperactivity, the hypothesis was the following. Kids who are hyperactive or attention deficit disordered are of a different neurological type. Now, as I said, in rare circumstances, that's true. But absent evidence for neurological dysfunction, I would hesitate to make that presumption. The run-of-the-mill hyperactive boy, if you put him on amphetamines, Ritalin, his attentional focus improves. Now, the original hypothesis was that's because these abnormal, abnormally neurologically structured hyperactive boys have a paradoxical reaction to amphetamine administration. It calms them down, whereas with normal people, they become more stimulated. Okay, there's a word for that theory, and the word is wrong. Okay, so more intelligent and differentiated analysis has indicated that if you give any child amphetamines, their, the grip of what they're attending to is stronger. So all children are calmed down by stimulants, personally, because the psychomotor stimulant, which is a dopamine agonist, which activates the focal exploratory system does increase the capacity for focal attention. But it does that with all children. And so a positive reaction to amphetamine in relationship to attentional focus is no indication whatsoever, even in the most minute manner, that the diagnosis was correct. And so... Now I don't buy it, except in these rare cases, is that we use amphetamines to conveniently modify the behavior of bored boys because we're too stupid to construct our education systems in a manner that doesn't drive them mad. <laughs> Look, you know, normal university students take Ritalin like mad in university because they learn that they can sustain attention, whether that's productive or not in the long run is a whole different issue, but they can sustain attention with less effort if they use amphetamines. Now, that's a degenerating game, fundamentally, like most drug use. And I suppose 
if it's very carefully regulated and the doses are low, then the negative consequences are less dramatic. But I think the whole thing's just, it's a, it's a psychosocial fraud. It's a, what do they call that? When, when a system produces the, there's a name for a disease that's created by doctors. I can't remember it. What's the word? Iatrogenic? Iatrogenic? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hyperactivity is an I iatrogenic disease created by schools. Yeah, that's, that's the case. So, boys should play more, way more than they do. Way more. They should play to the point of exhaustion in some sense every day. Really, really. They'll quit when they've had enough. I bet your hyperactive son has no trouble paying attention when he's playing video games. Well, that's worth thinking about, isn't it? <laughs>